This actress has squeezed a lot of great roles into a relatively short career. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Margot Robbie performances. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the best film and TV work from this talented and successful Australian actress. You would do well to watch your words. I will not be scolded by my inferior. Number 10, Jane Clayton, Baroness Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. My husband is no normal man. While this movie seemed promising, the finished product left something to be desired. The Legend of Tarzan did do well at the box office, bringing in $356 million, but the critics gave it mixed reviews. The consensus seemed to be that the writing and direction was lacking, and that Robbie did as much as she could with the material she was given as Jane. Hello. You're welcome to have it. As one writer for The Guardian put it, quote, committed performances aren't enough to save this film from uncomfortable colonial optics, uninspiring CGI, and tedious plot lines. We do think it's worth a watch, even if just for Robbie's performance. Is Mr. Ram ready for some more scintillating conversation? Number 9, Tanya Vanderpoel, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. I'm Tanya. Oh my god, it's so nice to have another woman in the house. The same year that she starred in Tarzan, Margot Robbie took a supporting role in a genre-defying war dramedy starring Tina Fey, called Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. She plays Tanya Vanderpool, a journalist with the BBC, who Faye's character befriends as the plot progresses. Because you're what? I mean, you're like seven, six, seven in New York? Here? Yeah. You were nine. Borderline ten. The tone of the film is difficult to pin down, and it received mixed reviews, with the Rotten Tomatoes consensus stating that, quote, Tina Fey and Martin Freeman are just barely enough to overcome the picture's glib predictability and limited worldview. Robbie herself didn't get an opportunity to do her best work here, but when she's on screen, she does what she can, and does it well. Dude, I'm not stealing your job. Number 8, Anne Burden, Z for Zachariah. My dad built that. He, he preached there every Sunday. If you haven't heard of this 2015 film, don't worry, you're not the only one. An adaptation of the sci-fi novel of the same name, Z for Zachariah was one of Margot Robbie's first starring roles, and stands out in her career as a genre that she hasn't really worked much in since. Her character, Anne Burden, is living in a post-apocalyptic world and is just trying to survive. It's just me. You just need to get out of the water, please. She's given great material to work with here, and shows off her dramatic chops alongside acting heavyweights Chiwetel Ejiofor and Chris Pine. This movie was definitely an indicator of the great things to come from the actress. You really believe that? I don't know what to think yet. Number 7, Queen Elizabeth I, Mary, Queen of Scots. You would have me to pose the system on it. It is either civil war there or civil war here. Robbie has quickly made a name for herself taking on real life figures with remarkable results. In 2018's Mary, Queen of Scots, Robbie plays Elizabeth I, opposite Sir Sharonin, who portrays the titular Mary during the period of the 16th century when Elizabeth's accession was put into question and Mary is put forward to replace her. You have the boldness to doubt my judgment. She is only your queen if I should not produce an heir. Robbie is virtually unrecognizable here, trading in her Australian accent for an English one and stripping away her natural beauty to show the harrowing effects the trying times had on the queen. Though the film takes some historical liberties, what's always clear is the electrifying chemistry chemistry between Ronan and Robbie, showing that both are at the top of their game and just getting started. My dear cousin, let our nations cherish each other as we would, two kingdoms united. Number 6, Jess Barrett, Focus. And why'd you come up here if you're so smart? Professional curiosity. And I like boobs. Early in her career, Robbie nabbed a spot starring alongside Will Smith in this crime film slash romantic dramedy. Paired with this A-lister, her star shone bright. She proved herself capable of being just as compelling as her hugely successful co-star. In the movie, she plays Jess, an up-and-coming con artist who teams up with Smith's Nikki Spurgeon to learn the ropes. You're not a serial killer, are you? The two end up becoming romantically involved, which makes their jobs all the more complicated. Reviews were mixed, but critics agreed that the acting was one of the film's high points. So what about the big con? Thought you are all big time. 
Number five, Daphne Milne. Goodbye, Christopher Robin. Do you know what writing a book against war is like? No, tell me. It's like writing a book against Wednesdays. Margot Robbie worked with Donald Gleason again for this 2017 film, which tells the story of A.A. A. Milne, the man who gave the world Winnie the Pooh. Goodbye, Christopher Robin looks at the melancholy tale behind the creation of the famed bear and his friends in the 100 Acre Wood, while also focusing on the historical context that inspired it. Evening news, what's put Winnie on the front page? Robbie plays Daphne, Milne's wife, who has an at times contentious relationship with him. Margot does excellent work here and cements her reputation as a period actress. You know, if you don't think about the thing, then it ceases to exist. Number four, Harleen Quinzel, also known as Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad. Something tells me a whole lot of people are about to die. Regardless of your feelings about the film as a whole, Margot Robbie's performance in Suicide Squad deserves a high spot on our list, because if there's any role that shows off her star power, it's this one. Robbie is magnetic as Harley Quinn, managing to strike that perfect balance of maniacal and endearing, while adding her own spin on the character unlike anything we'd seen before. We're bad guys, it's what we do. In a film that received its fair share of negative feedback, Robbie's performance was one of the bright spots that critics praised, saying they hoped she'd continue to appear in future films in the franchise. I'm known to be quite vexing, I'm just forewarning you. Ladies, shut up! Number three, herself, The Big Short. Basically, Louis Rainieri's mortgage bonds were amazingly profitable for the big bank. This movie put Margot Robbie front and center in a most hilarious way. Producers clearly knew that they'd have a hard time having moviegoers understand the complex economic concepts that were necessary to understand the plot of The Big Short. So they brought in the celebrity guns. Robbie, looking gorgeous and glamorous in a bubble bath, explains ideas like mortgage-backed securities and subprime loans, acting as herself in this film. So the banks started filling these bonds with riskier and riskier mortgages. Thank you, Benjo. That way, they can keep that profit machine churning, right? The result is funny and honestly quite effective. The entire cameo may have been something of a joke, but it definitely worked, and it's hard to imagine too many others pulling it off. Got it? Okay. Number two, Naomi LaPaglia, The Wolf of Wall Street. We're not gonna be friends. Margot Robbie's breakthrough role occurred in 2013 when she starred alongside the great legend Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street. While Leo was undeniably the star of the show here, playing real-life figure Jordan Belfort, Robbie had a key supporting role as his wife Naomi LaPaglia. Don't you duchess me! Do you Just really talk? think yeah. that I don't know what you're up to? Prior to this, Robbie had only had somewhat minor roles, and it was this part that helped her make it big. The way she got the role is sure to become Hollywood lore, because during her audition, she slapped Leo across the face in a totally unscripted move, impressing the casting directors in the process. Hi. Naomi. Nice to meet you. Naomi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We've got an awesome place here. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Can I, can I be party planner? Sure. Is Rebecca going to be home? Because we're going to have to do this together and there's so much to organize. Omar seems very down to earth. You know, for a future king. Despite by now the entire first class from Solomon's entourage? That wasn't his idea, it was his parents. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Number one, Tanya Harding. I, Tanya. This is bullshit. I never did this. By 2017, Margot Robbie's career was already thriving, but this role took her to the next level. By taking on the part of Tanya Harding in this biopic about the infamous American figure skater, Robbie downplayed her signature good looks and managed to earn herself an Academy Award nomination in the process. Why can't it just be about the skating? Her performance, which was praised by critics, was funny, poignant, emotionally raw, and delightfully irreverent. Though she didn't take home the statue, her part in I, Tanya has cemented her as a serious Hollywood A-lister. What kind of friggin' person bashes in their friend's knee? Who would do that to a friend? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.